All right, guys, how's it going? I've been working on a video for quite a while and it's been a difficult one and I did think that I'd have it finished by today but yesterday I realised I'd made a terrible error and I had to throw half of it out so I was really struggling to get a video out this week but luckily NVIDIA to the rescue with what is by far and away the biggest news of the week but before I get to that news let's take a look back over the past 18 months for a bit of context, starting back at the 23rd of July 2016 when Nvidia surprised us by revealing their new Titan X, which I reckon would be around about 30% faster than the GTX 1080 and a $1200 price tag and they called it the ultimate period. Now I made two or three major points in this video and the first was that I was sure that this was not the ultimate graphics card because I knew Nvidia had a faster card ready to launch in early 2017. Now of course the reason I knew this was because this new Titan X here, it was a cut down graphics card. We knew that because it had less CUDA cores, 3584 CUDA cores, but it was based on a graphics chip, GP102, that we knew had a maximum of 3840 CUDA cores. So that was pretty simple to figure out. This was not the ultimate period and there would have been a faster card coming later. And of course they did launch that full card in early 2017, called the Titan X small p. Now the second major point in that video was that I said Nvidia would also release a 1080 Ti a few months later which would be even further cut down than this Titan X. As it was, with AMD failing miserably to compete, Nvidia waited quite a bit longer than just a few months, but this is what I said about the likely 1080 Ti. The new Titan X launches $1200. One or two months later, you're going to get the 1080 Ti, which just like the 780, will be an even more cut down version of the Titan X. It will also likely have slightly faster clock speeds and performance will be very similar. The biggest difference will be it won't cost $1200. On the other hand, it's likely going to cost $900. You guys with the 980 Ti's? Well, your upgrade to the 1080 Ti is going to cost at least $800 and probably $900. That's the cheapest you're going to see GP102 at least for a very long time. And the third and possibly the most major point of this video was when I asked this question. I just wonder at which point, with these prices going up all the time, Nvidia offering cut down cards 25-30% faster than the GTX 1080, 50% price on top, at which point do you reach your limit when you say no more? At which point do you reach your limit? How much more are you prepared to continue paying for the newest high-end graphics card? Well, from this point in July 2016 until the end of 2016, and actually going beyond that, Nvidia has made an awful lot of money. And I basically knew by this stage that it was all over. Which is why I released what I still consider to be my best video. The GPU war is over. Just over one year ago, seems longer actually. But we didn't even know about Vegas performance back then. And people said this is a clickbait title. And one of my biggest issues with these videos is it doesn't happen overnight. And a lot of these predictions do take time to play out. But how is the GPU war looking to you today? And if you still don't think it's over yet, you will by the end of this video. But around the middle of January, AMD started to release information on Vega. We finally started getting some concrete numbers and they weren't very good. In fact, they were awful. The most important one was their own Doom demo, which clearly showed how fast the game was running. And based on what we knew from other graphics cards, we knew that Vega performed around the level of the GTX 1080. So I made a video saying Vega was not fast enough, people lost their minds over it, saying that the drivers were in terrible shape, and a bunch of excuses which I already knew simply would not wash. That was Vega's performance. But I made another comment in this video, around the 9 minute mark, when I said this. If Nvidia releases an HBM2 GPU at around 600 square millimeters, it is going to absolutely crush Vega by an unimaginable margin. Now when I'm saying around 600 millimeters squared with HBM2, I was still thinking on 16 nanometers, which would still have been the same process as what Nvidia had been using. They did have enough room there to squeeze in an even bigger graphics card. Around about the same size as GP100, except a pure gaming card. That was my expectation back in January. And as you just heard, I gave Vega absolutely no chance against such a graphics card. By now, AMD, or I should say 
RTG, the Radiant Technologies Group. I keep doing that. I should be splitting AMD and Radeon Technologies Group into two separate entities when talking like this because there are big, big differences between the two. But the Radeon Technologies Group were getting a little bit twitchy at some of my videos because it's safe to say they were taking a seriously negative slant. I basically slammed Vega twice in this Fallout New Vega and the Vega clarification videos and the last thing they want is somebody like me throwing out a bunch of bad press on their future products. So I spoke at length to Jason, Jason Meggett, one of the Radeon Technology Group's technical marketers and a really, really nice guy. We talked at length on various topics and at one point during the discussion, I basically just went on a massive rant, basically repeating again how Vega was simply not good enough and the worst part was it wasn't good enough today, let alone good enough against what Nvidia had coming. I don't always go into every point in every video because they're long enough, but to me, putting it all together, all the money that Nvidia had made in the second half of 2016, but not only that, the way that they slowly released the GTX 1080, bringing out the Founders Edition, charging $100 extra for it, and yet still selling massive amounts of cards, it just made it so, so clear to me that they were basically now on a complete new level. And it was at this point that I realised NVIDIA has so much money and they have such good relations with TSMC. That's the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. NVIDIA had such good relations with them and they've got so much money that there was nothing to stop NVIDIA from basically creating their own custom node and also just being able to buy early wafers on a new process, which is what I believe they did with the GTX 1080. That process wasn't in full manufacturing. When NVIDIA launched the GTX 1080, remember it was a massive paper launch. The cards were in very, very short supply for two months, but Nvidia didn't care. If anything, the scarcity of the cards simply drove up the prices, and they commanded a huge, huge price for what was effectively a mid-range card in the GTX 1080. But in talking to Jason about this, that was the issue for me. It wasn't the fact that Vega wasn't fast enough today, it was the fact that Nvidia was effectively faster without even really trying. And we know that AMD is struggling for money, and if you don't have the money, then you can't create the graphics cards. Whereas Nvidia, rolling in the cash, there was no way that AMD could ever compete with this large HBM2 graphics card if Nvidia chose to release it. Thursday, 7th December 2017, Nvidia Titan V, I think it's the Titan V and not the Titan 5, V for Volta, I would assume, transforms the PC into AI supercomputer. It's safe to say that this one surprised a lot of people. We already knew Volta was out there, but nobody was really expecting it this early on the PC. And make no mistake about it, Nvidia is marketing this as the world's most powerful GPU for the PC, which is an interesting line to market it as. They're not marketing it explicitly as a graphics card, but the word PC has clear connotations with consumers end users. We can see on Wiki that PCs are intended to be operated directly by an end user rather than a computer expert or technician. So it's very much like the Titans of old, for example your original Titan, which was a compute and graphics card. Since then the Titans were really just pure gaming cards. Your Titan X Maxwell and your Titan X Pascal, both of them, or was it three, I can't remember. But now with the Titan V, Nvidia is back to, let's just call it a prosumer card, just like the original Titan. And I'll jump over to Anantech for the specs, we can see immediately $3,000, that's the price tag, and we can compare it against the Tesla V100 that I just spoke about. The same number of CUDA cores, but this is a cut down GPU. It comes with 640 Tensor cores, which are the deep learning AI cores that Nvidia is starting to cram more and more of onto their professional level GPUs. It's got a higher boost clock than the Tesla V100, very slightly slower memory clock. Interestingly though, it's lost a quarter of the memory bus, however 653 gigabytes per second is still a massive amount of bandwidth for a PC level GPU. 12 gigabyte VRAM against the 16 and again looking at the L2 cache you can see it's a chopped down GPU. Regarding gaming performance we're basically looking at a single precision performance of 13.8 teraflops up against the Titan XP's 12.1 which is only a difference of 14%. It's not an awful lot but this is based on boost clocks which may or may not be anywhere near what the actual average boost of this part is. We simply don't know. On paper though it looks about 14% faster. The Titan V's got other issues, for example 5120 CUDA cores up against 3840. Without asynchronous compute, 
it's getting more and more difficult to fill more of these cores. So even though it's 14% higher teraflops, 14% faster on paper, it wouldn't necessarily make that 14% every single time. But as we can see, it does a double precision at half rate compared to the miserable rate of the Titan XP. This is what makes the Titan V a proper Titan just like the original Titan. Again, we can see the tensor performance, deep learning, 110 tensor flop. But the really interesting thing here is the massive, massive size of this GPU. 815 square millimeters compared to Titan X's 471. Now it's a little bit bigger than the 600 millimeters that I thought it would be, but remember it is cut down. So in raw silicon terms, I guess it's around maybe 700, maybe even around 650 square millimeters. 21.1 billion transistors and 250 watts again. Again, it's got the same TDP as the Titan XP. Even though it's got way more CUDA cores, a slightly lower core clock speed is a trade-off which allows the card to remain under 250 watts. But the most important upgrade there is of course TSMC's 12 nanometer FinFET N process, which is going to allow for I guess another 10-15% in terms of performance per watt. So essentially, what Nvidia has done is, and we've known this for a few months now, that they were going to do this. They have their own node at TSMC. This TSMC 12 nanometers was developed specifically for NVIDIA, basically so that they could create this new compute card, massive new die size, and essentially get the most that they can out of the 16 nanometer node. It's still based on TSMC's 16 nanometer node. It's just a evolution of it. And they have also massively expanded the reticle limit. 16 nanometers topped out around 610 as we know, whereas 12 nanometers got an extra 200 out of that. That's a lot of extra area for a lot of extra performance and the slightly more advanced node giving better performance per watt and possibly even higher clock speeds for the true consumer GPUs. The Titan V is decidedly more focused on compute. But that's not to say that it can't do graphics, because it can. It's still very much a video card, outputs and all, but Nvidia is promoting it as a workstation level AI compute card. But near the bottom of the article Ryan says, there are those of us who know better than to assume people won't drop 3000 to use the latest Titan card for gaming, because they will. And while gaming is not the primary or even secondary focus of the card, you also won't see Nvidia denying it. Which is exactly why they have marketed it as PC. Just leaves a little bit of doubt there. They're not marketing it as a gaming card, but they're saying, if you want to use it for gaming, go ahead. Because to that end, Nvidia has confirmed that the card uses the standard GeForce driver stack. But this is important. Whether those drivers have actually been optimized for GV100 is another matter entirely. Because Volta is a new architecture, markedly so at times. And at the very end, Ryan finishes with, he dare says that the idea of the prosumer Titan has died with this card. For me, Titan is simply a marketing term. That's all it is. I just don't look into it any more than that fact. Nvidia will label their fastest graphics card Titan something. But they've all had one thing in common. They have all been the fastest at graphics, whereas they haven't always been the fastest at compute. They're very clever. Nvidia's marketing is completely out of sight. They always pick the right choice. So it's not a gaming card, but it games better than any other card out there. By how much, we're not entirely sure. The thing for me with this one, is the worry over the driver optimization. With Volta being a new architecture, we just don't know. It would be easy for Nvidia to optimize for it right now and then not bother optimizing for it in future. What this really comes down to is what will Ampere be like? The recent rumors have stated that Volta GeForce was cancelled to be replaced with a new architecture, Ampere. There are various ways to analyze that. At this current point in time, my analysis would be Ampere is likely to be Pascal packs well on 12 nanometers, basically looking like the Titan XP with a bunch more cores and even higher clock speeds because it's not going to have stuff like this tensor flops. Double precision will be way down at 1 over 32 and it will be a pure gaming card again. It won't be this big, it won't be 815 square millimeters. It probably will be around the 600 plus, maybe 650 millimeter mark. Again, on the same 12 nanometer process, but just because it is tweaked as a real gaming card, it will be faster than this Titan V. In my last NVIDIA Titan X small P video, the Why Try one, where I said that the new NVIDIA Titan XP was still not the ultimate, period, there would be a faster card coming, I said they'd probably call it the Titan Ultra. Well, that was wrong. Titan V makes sense when you think about it, but my thoughts are maybe the true gaming successor 
to the Titan XP will be the Titan Ultra and we're likely to see that maybe in about another eight months or so on the new Ampere architecture, at which point this Titan V may not be getting the driver updates of a card befitting the $3,000 price tag. That is just my speculation on it. By this point, it's clear to me that Nvidia can do anything and they will sell cards by the millions. Deservedly so. You may have noticed a change in the channel ever since the GPU war is over video and that change has come from being a realist. As much as I want to see competition in the graphics market, the competition is dead as a dodo. Nvidia are so far ahead it is frightening basically, or it would be if I still cared about it. They are in fact so far ahead that they have an unassailable lead. Looking forward, the Radeon Technologies Group, their future is in blockchain, not in gaming. But effectively, for them to ever have a chance again, the Radeon Technologies Group would need to create a proper gaming-focused GPU, which they haven't done for a long, long time. They would have to have the money to afford to go early to new nodes, like what NVIDIA has just done. Basically bought a brand new node at TSMC to create even bigger GPUs on. Now we know that AMD are going to 12 nanometers and that Vega will almost certainly be seen on 12 nanometers, but it's likely gonna be a shrink of Vega. The power consumption is so incredibly bad that they need to use a new node for bringing down power. I just don't think we're gonna see 800 square millimeter Vega cards coming out of AMD. It's just not gonna happen. And even if they did, the chances of them being able to compete with a pure gaming focused graphics card from NVIDIA is essentially nothing anyway. Vega can't compete with GP102 because GP102 is a pure gaming graphics card. Vega is a jack of all trades. Titan V is a jack of all trades. But it is massive, which is why NVIDIA can continue to top their gaming graphics cards with what is a jack of all trades. There is no chance of AMD doing that. So AMD needs to create the graphics card, they need to have the node developed for them, they need to have the architecture. I mean, just how far behind do you think they actually are here? It's like I said at the end of my Intel AMD 2018 video, I briefly touched on NVIDIA and said NVIDIA deservedly so are out of sight because they just keep making really fast graphics cards and in fact I expect the gap to grow because NVIDIA are competing with themselves, their own customers, while the Radeon Technologies Group appears to be doing something completely different. I expect NVIDIA to be even further ahead. And today with the launch of the new NVIDIA Titan V, they have never been further ahead than what they now are. They fully deserve it. They are firing on all cylinders, release after release. I mean, yeah, they're marketing the hell out of it, but they're being successful with it and that's all that matters. In terms of GeForce, we can expect even higher prices and the same 20-30% level of increases that we have become accustomed to. But I guess we'll find out about that around the middle of 2018. It's also possible that Ampere could be in 7 nanometers. And if that is the case, if Nvidia is going straight to 7 nanometers with Ampere around the middle of 2018, we would be looking at Nvidia competing against Vega with what would effectively be GP106 level graphics cards, the lowest of the low end GPU a few years ago. That is how far ahead they are today. Right, so that's me done with this one. Bit of a ramble, as I obviously got zero time to plan and prepare this video. It's really just me getting my thoughts out, and hopefully you can figure out how my mind works at putting all this stuff together, and how I saw it a year ago, where this was all heading. And you can pretty much take it as read that when I'm saying NVIDIA will pull further ahead again over 2018, I'll be absolutely amazed if they don't. But don't forget to like and subscribe, check out the links. As usual, I'll link to the Anantech article as well, as well as all the old videos that I went through. You can have a look through those again if you haven't seen them. And next week I've got a little mini ITX build to do and I want to finish the video that I've been working on for a couple of weeks. There might be something there that gets your adrenaline going as well. Catch you later guys.